Hello and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be going over 15 cars from the original Test Drive Unlimited game that I would quite like to see return for Solar Crown. So we're returning to a sort of wishlist format video, which I haven't done for a little while, but you guys have been enjoying the Test Drive videos I've been putting out the last few weeks. So yeah, thought I would return with a wishlist of 15 cars I would like to see from the original game. Now I don't necessarily expect to see all of these, these are just some of the cars I would quite like to see an appearance, even if it is just a few of the cars on the list. I'm going to be avoiding classics as I already did a video about them fairly recently, so go and check that one out if you want to see which classic cars I'd quite like to see return. Um, and I'm also not going to be putting any cars in that carried forward to TDU2, even some of the ones that are the same model but slightly different year or specs. I'm also not going to include anything from the DLCs of the first game. Um, these are all going to be base game cars from the original Test Drive Unlimited, so cars that all of us enjoyed back when we played this game, whether we had the DLC or not. And a lot of these are the sort of unusual concepts and lesser known cars that, um, and brands that TDU always did such a great job of including in the past. So in alphabetical order, we kick things off with number one, the Ascari KZ1 a cool and unusual British supercar, which there are so many of these sort of small companies building supercars like this around the UK. Um, and Ascari unfortunately wasn't about for all that long. Technically we did have the KZ1R in TDU2, but I feel like that's enough of a difference to be a different model. So that's why this is just about squeezed in on the list. Secondly, we have the Chrysler ME412, one of the many mad concept cars of the early 2000s. Absolutely hideous, but unbelievably cool. Same goes for the next two cars, the Ford Shelby Cobra and the Ford Shelby GR1. Two stunning Ford concepts that would look awesome side by side each other in a Test Drive Unlimited Solar Crown garage. Next up, the Jaguar XJ220. Absolutely no explanation required for this one, I don't think. Definitely deserves a place in the new game. Again, the Koenigsegg CC8S, one of the earliest cars from this absolutely mad manufacturer that has grown massively since back then. Um, back when the first game launched, they were barely known as a company, so bringing back one of the early eggs alongside the new ones that they're going to be adding would be a really cool thing to see. The Maserati MC12, similar to the XJ220, I don't think we really need to explain why this should be in there. It's essentially a prettier, faster version of the Enzo, developed to, well, be able to go racing, so that definitely deserves a place. The Mercedes CLK DTM, I do really love these, um, like the CLK Black series, but even more racing car E. Um, absolutely mad um, that they were making things like this out of sort of what were fairly ordinary saloon cars back then. The Nissan Skyline R34, I would be literally killed if I didn't put the R34 in the wish list, and it is quite iconic and I do quite like it even if it is very overrated, so that definitely deserves a place potentially alongside a newer GTR. The Noble M12, another small British supercar manufacturer which would fit very well alongside the Ascari. The Pagani Zonda C12S, like the Koenigsegg, uh, an early Pagani needs to be in there really to sit along the newer stuff. Again, when the original came, game came out, there, weren't really, there was only really one Pagani model and nobody had really heard of them. So I think an early one of those and an early egg to sit alongside the newer versions would be really cool to see. The Celine S7. A powerful, fast American supercar, which are quite unusual. Yes, they're going for speed records and things again now, some of the Hennessy's and things, but why wouldn't we want it? A fast, powerful car like that. Uh, the VW W12 Synchro, another mad concept from the era that produced so many of them. A VW with a W12, kind of unfortunate that it was scrapped, probably because VW acquired Bugatti um, not that long after Test Drive came out, and obviously they wouldn't want a VW supercar uh, impeding on the Bugatti's market. Um, and to go alongside that, uh, the VW W12 Roadster, essentially the convertible version of that car. Both really, really cool concepts that were in the original Test Drive game. And last but not least, the Weissman MFs MF3, another not very well known manufacturer, not as insane performance as the others, but still a great little sports car. 
So there we go. Those are the 15 cars I would most like to see return from the original Test Drive Unlimited, the base game, not including any DLCs. Some of them are prize cars, um, but avoiding anything that carried forward into TDU2. Um, next week I'll be making a similar video on cars from Test Drive Unlimited 2 that I would like to see return. Again, that'll be cars that were just in that game and weren't in the first game. And then potentially I'll make another one on cars that were in both games that I would quite like to see return if you enjoyed this one. So do let me know what you thought of this video because I would love to make some more on Test Drive Unlimited 2 and, well, cars from both games and potentially some of the cars from the DLCs. Maybe we can make another wish list if you are enjoying these. Um, but that is going to be all for today's video. If there are any different cars you would have put on the list, or any that I've put on the list that you don't think should be on the list, do let me know. It would be interesting to see which cars you'd like to see come forward to Solar Crown. But that is going to be all, like I said, for today's video. So thank you very much for watching, and I'll be back with the next video very soon. Thank you.